Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with my review of Kamen Rider Build Episode 7 and we have another strong episode in my opinion. I don't think it was like a blow out of the water episode or anything, I don't know what that even means. But um, it continued the momentum we've been having. Um, and, and there was kind of a big-ish reveal in this episode. Well, technically two, like one of them was that Night Rogue is the mustached guy whose name I haven't bothered to learn yet. You know, one of the two main dudes from where Sento works that look like they they live in uh, the Ganma world, like they have that type of suit on. But that's pretty much been an easy guess. I mean, obviously we saw a picture in the preview uh, last week and there's been all kinds of basic confirmation in the last few weeks, but like this was the official confirmation and it, it was pretty easy to guess. Like a lot of people had just pretty much already guessed it, you know, from the get-go since the series started. So it wasn't really a huge surprise, but they did reveal in this episode and they showed off, you know, their transformation device and more of the steam blade because those toys came out this week. Um, I want to point out before I forget that it is kind of funny to me that like the steam blade uh, like on its own is pretty much like at least pretty close to the size of what it's going to be like as a toy at least closer than usual it's definitely or definitely probably going to be a little bit different but like much more so than usual because if you collect toku toys whether it's pr sentai or rider you know that usually you know the standard size swords or whatever weapon in the show is usually like this small when you get it so it's kind of funny to actually see something that's relatively close to what the toy size will be mainly because it reminds me of certain times like in pr when you can see them basically using the toy prop but anyway i just wanted to point that out since uh, I was thinking about it but so that was revealed and the main revealed tokusatsu words that are used too much revealed and confirmed um, but anyway uh, so the main premise was they were going to see the dude that was murdered his wife uh, in the in one of the other parts and I use this thing called the sky wall and they were being chased and um, there was a little bit of arguing at the beginning about Ryuga being mad that Sento might have done it and uh, at least they didn't hinder the whole episode. Like, I get why he would instantly be upset, but it, the fact that he was like, oh, turn yourself in, like, kind of annoyed me, because we don't know for sure, and even so, he doesn't remember doing it. I still don't think he did it. Like, I, I could be surprised in a week or two, but I still don't think he did it. I think it's a classic red herring situation. I think that maybe he witnessed it. I think that's potential, but I don't know. But so that kind of led them to going to see his wife, and we also found out that he was, uh the person that invented Smash. That was like the big reveal at the end of uh, the episode where Stark said he invented Smash. And at the beginning, we did find out that he was the one that started the human experimentation. Um, it was really funny because I was like, oh, I wonder, well, if he like started it or if he was like a scapegoat. And then they answered it basically by the end. I'm just kind of curious like why they would have killed him. Like, I, I am curious. They didn't say he invented it, but like, was he always in on it? Was it always like a Faust thing? And then he just did something that spurred them to kill him or get killed or whatever? Or did he invent it on his own and then Faust discovered it and like co-opted it? I don't know, but we'll find out. But so that was the big reveal at the end. Basically, we actually found out a lot about this guy. We found out uh, like about his wife. We found out that he was involved in this. Um, so, so that was kind of a big deal. And uh, she kind of got to see um, like the good side, as if she's seen a bad side, but she assumed Ryuga killed her husband, uh, but, uh, you know, she got to see them both saving her, so that'll probably lead into next week, uh, her giving them get more information and stuff like that, so that's probably what's gonna happen there. Uh, we did get a debut of a new best match, we got, uh, Rocket Panda, which was also another sort of in-the-field debut, which I do just find amusing, just based on how forms usually have debuts, like, even in the more... Um, not lackluster, but even in the seasons where forms aren't a certain storyline, there's usually some sort of circumstance around it, so I just find it amusing that Build can find them in the field. But um, I like how it was introduced and the fact that we were introduced to Panda first as Panda Gatling is like a not best match or like one of O's imperfect combos. Um, and I actually like that form too. I like the way that looks. I think the Gatling and the, the Panda like kind of flow together nicely. And it's, I like how both combinations with Panda right now are just like so extreme. It's like Panda and Gatling and Panda and Rocket. It's just, I don't know, I find it amusing. But anyway, so we got introduced to um, Panda like that, and then Rocket was actually the one being used by Stark in his steam gun or whatever, and they picked it up. So I thought that was kind of cool that he ended up using uh, one of his, and that's how we got the best match this week. And it's also, like I said, a pretty cool combo. Uh, I, I dig it quite a bit, and I like the way, it, like the, his finisher and the way he fights with that kind of reminds me of Forze a little bit, and using the Rocket like arm to propel himself into punch, but he doesn't just use that arm, he uses like the panda one, so that was pretty cool. 
Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was a solid episode. We got a little bit more momentum. We found out a way to go to these other areas. Um, like I said, I still don't think that Sento is the one that killed him. I think there's a, he either was more involved somehow, like he witnessed it, or it was like a classic situation where he it was like a coincidence, and maybe he visited him. And, well, he did visit him. We know that. Unless he never made it. For all we know, he never even made it to the dude's office. He looked pretty stupid when he was before he had his memory loss, so maybe he didn't even find the office. Maybe the dude was getting killed while Sento was just crazy-haired looking for his office. But it's also possible he met with them and then left, and then the killer came in right afterwards. Or, I don't know, maybe he saw the, the dude dead first and then got kidnapped. So there's all kinds of things that could have happened, but I'm, I'm interested to find out what's next, and I'm continue to be impressed by the momentum that Build has, and um, hopefully it'll keep it up. So overall, a 8.0, very solid episode. I'm still really, really enjoying build. Um, until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It's Dawson Ryder, signing out.